good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for having me here. I'm very much excited about this meeting. Today's title uh, is, my title is Scientific Learning and Education for Human Security and Wellbeing. I'm interested in uh, the meaning of scientific. So uh, the, I'm thinking scientific meaning is very much close to the evidence-based. And uh, I'd like to show you uh, the proceedings of the uh, two forums. Uh, very accidentally, I worked for uh, the environmental field and also worked for uh, the education and also the neuroscience field. And we had uh, the one meeting in 1996, sponsored by government, and uh, four days international symposium, uh, the International Transdisciplinary Forum on Science and Technology for the Global Environment environmental measurement and analysis. And we had some special session for relationship between environment and the brain, because uh, it must be a very important issue in the future, I thought. And also, uh, the reason why the, I uh, worked for that is the uh, first my work is the invention of Zeeman effect mercury analyzer uh, just uh, worked for uh, the clarification of the causes of uh, the Minamata disease. Uh, most of you know that Minamata disease is the almost a grand zero of the pollution programs and led to the environmental issues, global and environmental issues. And also, uh, the way there's the forums in 2000, the transdisciplinary forum towards the 21st century, uh, just before the 21st, 21st century we did. The title was Developing the Brain, a Science of Learning and Education. And uh, later, uh, before that, see, uh, we named it Brain Science-Based Education. And the reason why the, we worked for that is uh, we have been working for the various kinds of brain imaging methodologies. So the uh, Zeeman effect is a very interesting uh, phenomena and uh, discovered by Peter Zeeman. And this is uh, really the basic principle. But uh, we apply this uh, really basic, princ basic principle in the physics to environmental issues in 1975. So uh, this year is the 40th anniversary of uh, this uh, first slide. In 2002, uh, the OECD forum, 2002, was held in Paris. Uh, the title of that the uh, OECD Forum in 2002 was Security, Equity, Education, and Growth. So very much uh, uh, related to the subject of this uh, workshop. And my good friend, uh, Bruno de la Chiesa, uh, the working uh, for the OECD at that time, I uh, just planned some special symposium, uh, Brain and Learning, a revolution and education for the 21st century. So uh, this uh, is the highlight uh, uh, booklet published by OECD. So uh, the reason why we uh, were very much interested in this kind of approach uh, was uh, this is also evidence-based approach. Uh, the a plenary lecture of uh, the symposium and this forum uh, was the uh, Mrs. Uh, Laura Bush, and uh, she gave the interesting uh, lecture. 
She just uh, mentioned security, equity, education, and growth. All four are important, and I believe all four hinge on one education. And education is a top priority. I uh, also the, uh, thought about uh, this kind of thing, and uh, I just uh, made uh, some uh, figure, the left side of this uh, slide. Security, equity, growth are very much related to sustainability. And but education is different. Education is just a hinge, just a basement of uh, the other three. And uh, from OECD, Understanding the Brain, uh, uh, this book was published, uh, uh, published from OECD in 2002 and translated into more than six languages. And so the, I worked uh, for that so with Bruno and also the, I, we translated uh, this book into a Japanese version. So uh, many of uh, the activities uh, uh, done uh, for uh, this kind of subject. Uh, of course, uh, brain, mind, education, and uh, also some other activities. But uh, because of the limitation of time, I only show the very recent results uh, that is uh, the symposium, Science of Learning uh, Symposium. Uh, it was uh, held uh, April 24 uh, this year. Uh, the reason why uh, we had the symposium was uh, new Nature Personal Journal Science of Learning that will be published within this year. So it was the launching uh, symposium held in Brisbane. So Dr. Philip Campbell, uh, the editor-in-chief of Nature, attended and we discussed and discussed. Anyway, uh, this journal will be published very soon. As for uh, the uh, <coughs> environmental issues, I just see, uh, mentioned about the recent results only. Uh, it, uh, such kind of instrument uh, worked for and clarify the causes of uh, the Minamata disease and also the many kinds of the pollution issues. So I believed evidence-based approaches to environmental issues must be very important. Of course, the, the we discussed uh, uh, very heavily about uh, this kind of things, even in global uh, warming. And uh, uh, two years ago, uh, <coughs> My invention uh, was assigned as a heritage of analytical and scientific instruments. I am very lucky because I am still alive. And also, uh, the Zeeman effect is uh, Zeeman effect of AAS is just for uh, the spectroscopy, uh, trace element analysis. This is a Zeeman effect of photon. And, uh, but the Zeeman effect of uh, the nuclear spin is NMR, and uh, it's supplied to MRI, magnetic resonance imaging. So it's very easy for us to move from the optical field to MRI. So that we have been working for uh, the various kind of MRI technique, including the function MRI and also the <coughs> optical imaging devices. But uh, the important thing is also, it's, uh, I believe, the evidence-based approach. But uh, because of the limitation of time, I didn't uh, talk much about this. So I'd like to introduce uh, the completely new idea of uh, the measurement of the brain. Uh, so in case of uh, the <coughs> conventional brain imaging, the we used uh, the photons as a probe. And uh, we just uh, put this probe, the photons, into the brain, and <coughs> we observe the perturbation 
of early <coughs> probes. Then we can get other information from other living brain. So the similar things I thought by using uh, the language. So language is very much different from forums, but the basic idea of analysis is very similar. So the, uh, this is a dialogue with artificial intelligence. We can use the questions, answers, and comments. That can be used as the producers. And also the results. Oh, sorry. Sorry, thank you. Uh, sorry. A result of <coughs> the perturbation. So the important thing is this is a bidirectional. So uh, that's how we can do that. So this is a uh, proposal of the bidirectional artificial intelligence in the near future. Uh, we are thinking uh, the many applications. A teacher in the future, an analyst on educational method. As you know, it's very difficult. A doctor for medical diagnosis, preservation of minor language cultures. This is a kind of a home task from, uh, given by the Dr. Catherine Ross. And others, uh, language education for migrants and uh, refugees. And uh, of course we need a highly sophisticated software is needed. Uh, we have been working on this. We published uh, very few preliminary uh, results <coughs> by my colleagues. So uh, the, today, I also propose a new idea of education uh, that uh, I named it the evolutionary pedagogy. Uh, this is uh, from the Heckel's late capitula uh, capitulation theory, but it's not exactly the same. Uh, this uh, capitula capitulation uh, theory as you know, the ontology repeats the phylogeny. But the problem was his theory was completely denied as a fraud in the biological fields. But many scholars <coughs> thought about this. For example, Sigmund Freud and Carl Gustav Jung and Jim Piaget, especially in case of Piaget. Jim Piaget's doctoral thesis was on gastropods in the Jurassic period. He was a paleontologist at that time. After that, he just moved to the field of the psychology. The suspicion of fabrication by Ernst Haeckel caused related research to very slow. I found uh, this kind of thing and checked uh, the thought of uh, the many, many pedagogists in that year, uh, like uh, <coughs> Pesarotti, uh, Freibel, and uh, uh, Herbert. And they had a very similar kind of ideas, but because of the fraud of the fabrication of uh, Heckel, they are very much hesitated to clarify his idea. And uh, we found that the origin of spiral education existed around in this era, the 18th centuries. Uh, this is the uh, Heckel's uh, drawing. It's uh, uh, very wonderful. It's one of the reasons why he suspected. Uh, <coughs> he suspected. So, even in 1997, oh sorry, even 1997, sorry about that. Okay. A little bit, no, it can't work. 
Okay. This is Hecke's drawing. Uh, this is a uh, recent. <coughs> uh, you have uh, three okay. or four minutes more. Okay. Uh, this is uh, a taking paper to Hecke appeared in Science. Uh, so, uh, the Heckel's uh, drawing is completely different of real uh, for us. So, uh, the title of the article was Heckel's Embryos, Fraud Rediscovered in Science. But I very much uh, suspected about this article. And later I found that uh, there is some the new journal, uh, new paper already published in 2009. And this is a recent protected paper for Heckels. Heckels and Boro embryos, fraud not proven. So uh, this is a real photo and also the Heckels uh, drawings of the early version. So uh, because of the limitation of time, I don't tell much about that. Uh, the uh, former article was uh, very much, uh, what should I say, uh, wrong. So uh, this is a prehensile movement of the human hand. So power grips and uh, precise grip, uh, they are two completely different uh, neural nerve circuits. So uh, this is important point. It's a very much uh, uh, related to evolution, oh sorry, very much, <laughs> it can't work, sorry, yeah, then, so for example, in humans, uh, pianist and violinist can play uh, the instruments uh, very, very, uh, which is wonderfully, but chimpanzee can do that because uh, <coughs> the chimpanzee uh, doesn't have the, uh, this kind of the new uh, areas uh, evolved in only humans. So I believe the heart of Lamada part is very much related to this kind of a fact. So this is also the evolution related myelination order and the human brain. It's uh, <coughs> related to evolution very much. And uh, uh, this is a gene analysis of fossil bone marrows of <coughs> Neanderthals. So recently, uh, the people of uh, the Max Planck found that some of the uh, mutation, A to T, from A to T, and FOXP2, uh, they discovered even in the fossil of the Neanderthals. So uh, the <coughs> I have been working for Sony Preschool Education Program for Children as a chairman. And the uh, Sony Preschool Education Program has, has been working more than 10 years. And we had an number of project proposals, more than 1,000 over 10 years, uh, just about zero year to five years. The theme that was nurturing the scientific mind, cultivating the roots of keen sensitivity and creativity. Sorry? Sorry, uh, this. Uh, you have a... Yeah, just see, I would like to conclude. Thank you. Can I have a slide? Yes. Okay. Okay, the, I will conclude. Oh, but um, my, my clock shows the one minute more. Yeah. So the uh, mindset for science is a sensitive mind deeply moved by the wonders of nature and curiosity. An open mind that accepts the truth and doesn't try to bend facts. An honest mind uh, that decides and acts without prejudice or bias. A mind uh, which understands that all life within nature has value. A mind that respects diversity and is considerate of others. 
And the last slide. So the, I am very much interested in the ancient Indian philosophy. Uh, this is from the very ancient philosophy, uh, BC 500, just before the Buddhism appeared. Uh, in Pali language, metta means unconditional loving kindness, such as that in the gentle heart of good friends or a mother. Kaluna means uh, the ability of share another's pain as if it were one's own. Mudita are uh, the altruistic joy and another's good fortune. Avikshur, equanimity as a balanced state of mind with no strong attachment to things and self. So the, I believe the ethics should be uh, the most important even in case of the <coughs> sustainability. And uh, I believe ethics is warm-heartedness or compassion. So it's uh, a human dig dignity, I believe. So I just would like to cut uh, the last slide. We feel the collaboration with many academies to think about uh, the ethics and ethics should be the first priority. Okay, thank you very much indeed.